Sometimes we have a variable amount of content that we need to show on the screen, but we're also limited in the space that we have to show it. Now there's different ways that we can tackle these types of situations. And I think sort of the traditional carousel was never really the best solution to stuff, but sometimes horizontal scrolling can actually be a pretty good use case. And actually we're starting to see it a lot these days. It's being used on Instagram with their reels and with their stories along the top. It's being used over on Netflix to show like sort of their groupings of movies. It's even being used here on YouTube with the shorts that we have. And so in this video, we're gonna be looking at creating a CSS only approach to creating these types of components. Hello, my front end friends. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And you might notice things look a little bit different today because I've changed my setup a little bit. So a little things are different. I'm on Windows 11 now as well. We're, just, we're off to like a fresh start with, you know, updating one thing. I might as well update everything, but you might be wondering what, what what's this guy talking about? And if that's the case, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least get you to be a little bit less frustrated by it. And yeah, today we're gonna to be doing that by exploring how we can create these horizontal type of components. We're gonna be doing it with a little bit of grid. We're gonna be looking at scroll snap and a few other fun things, some logical properties. Uh, we're gonna be using a bunch of custom properties. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's go and dive in. All right, so let's get started with this. And as you can see, I already have some HTML written and even some basic styling, but nothing that actually contributes to what we're going to be doing. And what I've done is we have a media scroller here and then inside there, I just have a whole bunch of children. I called the media elements. And for my simple demo, I just have an image to go along with a title for each one of them. Some have longer titles, some have shorter titles, and I just have a whole bunch. And we're actually gonna look at two different ways of doing this, one where it's more based on the individual items. And then we're also gonna do a second one that's more based on like groups of content, which is more similar to like the Netflix style where when you click once, it just swings across uh, like an entire group. So we're gonna start with this first one and then see how we can modify that to create the second one that we're going to be doing. And as I said, we already have a little bit of CSS done, but it's really, it's nothing that applies directly to what we're going to be working on. Uh, the one thing you will notice here is I have linked to open props. Um, I actually built this first on a live stream with Adam Argyle where we were exploring open props and stuff with it. And he has lots of experience with scroll snapping and with uh, this horizontal scrolling. It's something he's worked on a lot. So I sort of stole a bunch of ideas from him. So I'll link to a few of the different things he's done to create similar types of elements in the description of this one as well, as well as a replay of the live stream that we had together. I'm not gonna dive too deep into open props in this video, though I will use them for a few things and sort of explain what they're doing, but it's really simple. Um, and we're not gonna use it for like the functionality of what we're building at all, just some general styling. And so let's come in and we're going to, you know, let's, let's set the stage talking about general styling. We have that media scroller. And so let's start on there. So media scroller, just like that, a nice, simple class selector. And we want our media scroller to have all the content going you know, across instead of stacking on top of each other. And you could definitely do this with Flexbox if you want to take a Flexbox approach. I'm going to use grid just because I find it's easier because then I can control everything just on the parent. So let's do a display of grid and it does take one extra step here because when we do a display of grid, nothing really happens as a default. It just, okay, it's grid now. Um, and our default is to have rows, but I want to switch that so I can do that with a grid auto flow of column. And by doing the grid auto flow of column, now look at this, this is kind of interesting, but it's here's where we really see it um, coming into effect. You can see it's overflowing out the side. So every child that is inside my media element now has become a column instead of a row. So they're not stacking the way we traditionally would. They're now going left to right. They're sort of squishing down based on the text that's inside of them. And then when we go, you know, they run out of room, so they sort of shoot out the end. So this would actually be probably very similar that if we just threw a display of flex on here. The reason I like using grid for this type of thing is then I can come on here and I'm gonna say grid auto column. Uh, columns, plural on this one, I always forget the S. And then I can say how big I want each one to be. And I'm gonna start with a number like 25%. Uh, we're gonna change this. I'll explain why as we do it. Um, but basically what's happened is we're saying they're all columns and all of these auto columns. So, so this is different from saying grid template columns because with grid template columns, you have to define every single column that you want. Columns and rows are being defined. And in this case, we have a grid auto flow of columns. So every one of these elements here is creating a new column. And because I don't know how many elements are in here, I don't wanna use grid template columns. And maybe I have one element like this that has 10 and I have another one that has 25 elements in it. And if I was doing something like that, then if I use grid template columns, I'd have to change the amount of columns for each one. 
Whereas by saying grid auto flow column, everyone is automatically a column and then grid auto columns because they're automatically generated columns, I can define the width of each one of those columns right there. And one thing I, I would recommend not doing is something like this with like a 25% because now what happens is it's not obvious that there's actually like overflowing content, right? It, it's coming up to here and it's just, you know, it, it looks like it's just fitting the page. Uh, this would be the same as if I did 20% because now we sit five items. So any any number that can easily be divided by 100 or e evenly divide, you know, 100 divided by 20 gives you five, 100 divided by 25 gives you four. Um, items like that, it's probably not the right number to go with. So we could come in here with like a 23. Um, and then you can sort of see like, oh, look, there's there's extra content that's falling off the edge um, that's missing a little bit. So as like an individual item like that, I'd really recommend just coming in with like kind of, you know, not 33.33%, but maybe a 36% or something like that. So just to make sure that things are spilling off the side and it's obvious, you know, it looks like there's more content. Um, and maybe 36 doesn't really show that as well as it could. It would depend on the title and stuff like that. But for this one, let's go in with that 21. Uh, and the reason I'm going to go with 21 is because I'm also going to add a gap on here. And for this, I will use an open prop just because I want some consistency. Um, so this is just going to be a size three. And basically open props, it's just this really big bank of custom properties that we can use. So there's sizing, there's typography, there's colors and things like that. Um, so, you know, this gap could just be one rem and then you could go from there. Um, so there we go. We have my gap that's set up. Now, the problem is I'm not actually scrolling my media scroller. I'm scrolling the page right now. And if you want to know, I'm just holding shift and then scrolling. That's why I'm going left to right. We're going to see a little bit of a mobile version of this after. And it's it's really nice with the mo like a touch screen, what we're going to eventually build, especially once we get the scroll snap in there. Um, but yeah, right now we're doing the whole page, which we don't want. So on my media scroller, we're going to come in and we're going to say that it has an overflow X, because that's where the main overflow we're dealing with here is auto. And right away, now we can see that we're scrolling left to right, just like that. And depending on the device that you're on, whether it's, you know, I'm on Windows with uh, Chrome right now, if I was in Firefox, the scroll bar would look a little different. And if I was on Mac, it would also look very different. So your scroll bar, your scroll bar might look a little bit different, but there are ways of also styling it. But at least we see that it's working and I can scroll back and forth on that individual um, component now rather than the old, whole page. Uh, but anytime you do something like this, even though on this component, I, I don't think it would be something that we need to worry about too much. Um, but it can be really useful to set an over anytime you're making a component that can scroll on its own, having an over scroll behavior, behavior uh, can be really useful. And I'm actually going to do overhaul behavior inline because we're dealing with the inline axis. Left to right is inline. We're going to be using logical properties and stuff along the way. So uh, we're going to do that and we're going to say contain. And what that means is if somebody gets to the end and they keep trying to scroll within that component, it won't actually like do that, especially if you're on a touch device where it could potentially like, pull the page over or something weird. Um, which I don't even know if it would do that left to right. It's more up and down that that could happen. But even if you had something in the page where you're horizontally scrolling and you're scrolling, 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 and then you get to the bottom, you don't necessarily want it to all of a sudden pull the whole page down because that can throw people off a little bit. So what this does is it just means that if you're scrolling within that thing, it can't scroll other elements. So it won't like, you know, we're containing the, the scrolling behavior if you get to the ends uh, is what over scroll behavior does. And we're only focused on inline because we're only scrolling on the inline axis. Now, right now, these the cards that are in here do not look very good. So let's make those look a little bit better. So I'm going to come down and select them. Media element uh, is what we called it, right? So we have my media scroller filled with media elements. And so we'll come in here and just to get a bit more consistency, because you can see like they're not consistent at all. Some images are bigger. Some images are smaller. It means the titles are weird. Uh, it also means like here, this card's almost touching the bottom, whereas over here we get these really big gaps and spaces. So just to help with consistency across the board, it makes it a little bit easier to have dynamic content and long titles and short titles and whatever you're throwing in it. Uh, let's do a few different things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some padding to these and I'm going to use var. And you know what? I think it would actually be nice to use the same size. And again, this could be any padding number. It doesn't have to be this open prop value. Um, so if we throw that padding now, it looks a little off, but let's also give it a background. So background background and var surface two. And these are just the surface here that I'm using is not just from open props. It's actually coming from um, open props is normalized. Uh, but if, you, if, if you'd like a more in-depth video that's looking at open props and using open props to do stuff, leave a comment down below and let me know because 
I would gladly dive in and make some more content on this. Um, we'll give them a border radius um, of radius two. And now we've run, we're starting to see, okay, they're looking a little bit better. Let's fix my images actually, and then we'll come back to a few of the issues with the card itself. Uh, so here I'll do my media element. And if we have an image, if there's one of the direct children is an image, uh, on there, we can come in with a, we'll say width is 100%, just to make sure it's always filling the size. And talking about logical properties, I shouldn't use width, let's use an inline size instead, um, which is the logical property for width. And then let's come in with an aspect ratio, aspect ratio. And I'm gonna do a 16 over nine. There is an open prop for this, but I wanna make it really obvious uh, what this is doing. So it's a saying, you know, we're, we're giving it that ratio of 16 to nine for width versus height. So. A uh, nice little widescreen look to that. The only problem is it will squish and stretch images. So with that, we'll throw an object fit of cover, which works very much like background size cover does. So it will crop the images a little bit, but at least it means they're not squished and we're getting this more uniform look to our cards now, which is kind of good, I think. I'm also going to come back, let's come back onto here and actually throw a display of grid on here. Just so by putting a display of grid, you'll see like my titles actually moved off a little bit. Um, but we're going to do a gap of var. I'm going to do it a little bit smaller here. We'll do a size two instead of a size three, um, just for the spacing that's right here, but it, it still looks uneven and that's kind of weird. And it's just because of the way the rows are created when we did this display of grid here. So I will come on this one and say grid template, template column, uh, rows, not columns is going to be a min content. And I don't really have to worry about the other one. It's just going to fill up all the space, but it just means that first row that's being created where my image is, is the smallest size. So it's actually going to fit the image and it can't overflow. So then all my text is just lined up and it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and what I like about that is it just opens up the grid. Um, the, I mean the gap possibility. You could also use a display flex for something like this, change the flex direction and then use gap as well uh, and get a similar type of thing. Um, and you know what, I'm actually going to bring this gap up to the size three. And this opens up another thing where we're using size three here, we're using it here. We're also using it for this gap and for consistency on things like this, it can be really useful to come in with your own locally scoped custom property. And so if I come on here and I say, we can call this spacer and I'm just going to put one rem for now, just to say, you don't need to be using these fancy custom props. You can be just coming in with your own value right here. Um, and then here I could do my spacer. And then down here and over here, we could also come in and use my spacer. And so this becomes this locally scoped property. And the nice thing with this is if I change this value here, it's changing across the board. And so what that means is we just get this more consistent spacing going on. So my padding, my gap, and this space are always going to be the same. And I think here what would actually be nice is to have some space on the left and some space on the bottom. So on the media scroller itself here, we can come in and add that. Um, so let's just say right here, we can come in with some padding. Uh, we don't really need any padding on the top, but on the left and the right, we'll use my var spacer. And on the bottom, we'll also use a var of spacer. And now we get the space there, the space here, my gap, and the space here is always going to be the same. And so I can come in and I can update it here and it's gonna update everywhere at the same time. So it just keeps this nice consistency within this component, which is always kind of handy to have. And one thing, we talked about this a bit on stream when I was with Adam, um, it was, I think it was Le Lea Veru, and I'll put a link to her article in the description on this, of uh, putting in an underscore here. And uh, her idea with this is it's sort of, it's sort of like with JavaScript, you're making like a private property. So you're indicating that this isn't part of like your root. It's it's something that you're, you're sort of, we're, we're doing a little freelancing here, I guess you could say. And we're making like a private property for my media scroller. Um, so just that's why we could put the underscore, which of course would mean we put the underscore everywhere else, just like that. And we probably need it over here as well. And whoops. And I just zoomed out instead of putting an underscore. Um, there we go. So by doing that, now we get that consistency back and then I could come back in and I could do this as a custom prop. So it was my size three like that. Uh, so again, this is just, you know, change the number here. I'm just changing the overall spacing on everything. So something like that for consistency, I think is wonderful to have. And then let's also, one last thing, let's come on and throw a box shadow on here just to make them look a little bit nicer and var shadow 
to. And this is what I like about custom props is like all of these already exist and there is like a, a just in time or a JIT version of them. So if you're worried about sort of bloating your CSS, you just come in and change the number here and play with different shadows. Some are more strong, some are less strong. And so for quickly prototyping stuff, it can be really nice. Um, and for demos like this, for me, it's, it's wonderful. And there we go. I think they're looking not too bad. They're not magical or anything, but uh, it sort of sets the stage. We get the side scrolling. We get these cards that look good, the consistency with our spacing. And now we want to add some scroll snap to it. And what I would probably recommend is actually doing this as a separate class. So I have my media scroller and let's come on and do um, snaps inline. And again, we've talked about inline size and logical properties and stuff like that. So we're saying it's going to snap on the inline axis. And I like separating these two, just so you might have a media scroller that just scrolls and you might want another one that snaps. And we're going to see the next one, which is more of a snap group instead of um, individual ones. You know, uh, I think separating the concerns on that can be good and it makes it so you don't have this one giant thing controlling everything. Uh, so we have my media scroller, media elements, image. Let's come down here and we'll do my snaps inline. Now there's not too much we actually have to do on here, but we need to set it up to actually be snapping. And we also have to tell the children, we have to add a behavior to the children as well to get this to work. So on here, let's do our first thing, which is scroll snap type. And I'm not gonna deep dive the different options we have here. There's only two really, you have mandatory or proximity. I'm gonna be using mandatory um, for this, but if you wanna play around with this yourself, you can, mandatory. Um, the one mistake I have made here before is um, you can either do X, Y, so X axis or Y axis, but we also have inline or block. So we've already, we have snaps inline. I'm going to say inline. Um, make sure that this comes first. I was going crazy one time because I did it this way around and it just wouldn't work. So this has to come first, whether it's the X or whether it's the inline. The order of this does matter. So inline and mandatory. And when I first do that, it's not actually going to do anything. Nothing changes because it doesn't know what it needs to snap to. And it goes, okay, we want snapping, but what, what am I snapping to? And because this component is separate from my media component, I think it makes a lot of sense because then again, this makes it a bit more universal in how you could use it is a snaps in line and then select all the direct children of my snaps in line. And you could do something similar here. Instead of having a media element, you could do a media scroller and then have that is like selecting the direct children um, if you want, instead of having to name these. So that's up to you on how you want to do it. Um, but we're going to say select all the direct children of my snaps in line. And we want to set these up to actually snap now. And this is where we tell it where it's going to align to. So scroll, snap, align. And you can do start, end, middle. Uh, it depends on the size of your elements and how you want to do things. But for this one, we're going to use start like that. And you'll notice one issue that's come up. We're going to fix that, but <laughs> we, we, we lose the side here. But you can see it's, it's actually snapping. And if I go this way and we go and it just, every time I let go of my scroller, it just finds the right place to go on. We can't end up in the middle of something. And if I try and I let go, it snaps to the next one. Now the scrolling behavior in Chrome is a little bit different from Firefox. Firefox, as you scroll, it will snap to things. So you can't like stop and then it'll go. It sort of makes it a more fluid motion. Chrome actually follows the spec a little bit more on this, where when you scroll, uh, it actually, it stops scrolling and then jumps there. And we'll see though on, on mobile, it's a really nice experience overall. Um, but there we go, that's working and it's always going to snap into place and I think that's a nice a nice start to it. But as I said, there was this one problem that if you have some space on the side, you can't actually get to it, <laughs> which is super frustrating, right? You're like, I, you know, you want it to look like this. <laughs> so to fix that, we come back up to my snaps inline and it's scroll padding. And in this case, we only want it on the left and the right. So to be scroll padding inline and then you put however much you need and we can just reference back to our uh, underscore spacer custom property that we created. And once again, it comes in handy. And um, this could be something where <laughs> I'm referencing something that's not actually part of snaps in line. So you might be going, Kevin, you're cheating a little bit here because um, maybe that's not always available and you're right. So this could be, uh, you know, um, but it could be something where you're sort of know that it's going to be set up with something where that type of element will be present. And you can always give this a fallback. So you could say like one one rem. So if if it's not, if this doesn't exist, it's going to use this instead. So yeah, I think something like that's a nice solution. So there's always some padding, but if you have a spacer set up on the element you're using it on, it will use that spacer. 
And by doing that, then we get this nice scroll all the way across. And if we want, it can snap. And let's actually just take this and we're going to come up here. We're going to go to the live view or you can do debug as well. Uh, and just because I want to show you the, um, the mobile version of this without actually pulling out my phone uh, and why it's kind of nice. So if we're in the mobile version, you get sort of the touch simulation. And what's nice about this is you scroll, you let go, and it just sort of slides into place up to the next item. And then it slides to the next one. And it becomes this unmobile. These types of components are really, really nice, which is why I think this is going to become more prevalent because we're going to be seeing it. Uh, it's already very prevalent on mobile. And just that pre being prevalent on mobile usually means it bleeds over um, into desktop as well. So you just get this nice overall, you give it a swipe, it slides, stops, always clean on something instead of being in between different things. Uh, so we can close that down. And uh, let's look at these element groups now. So instead of individual elements that go by like here, where we can go one at a time, you, sometimes you want to do a whole group that can slide by. So you have five, swipe, goes to the next five automatically. So to do that, let's go look at my HTML. And if we come down, you can see here I've set up my media scroller just like we had before. But then I have media groups. And this is sort of this important change that I've made. And in the media groups, we're going to see that each media group for me has five elements in it. Uh, you could do this, and I, I took off the titles just because they're going to be tiny, but um, for this one, you could do it with 10, you could do it with two, whatever you want. And each one technically could have a different amount of media in it. So you could have like five in this one and three in this one, but th the sizing of stuff might get thrown off a little bit with it. So I'd strongly recommend at least having the same amount of elements inside each media group. But again, it's a media group, and then in each media group, I just throw my media elements, whatever you need to be in there, uh, just like we had before. So what we want to do now is let's come back up here at my media element. Uh, we're going to come here to my media scroller, and we need to make a little bit of a change um, to this. And what it, actually, we're going to need to modify the media scroller as well. So I'm going to create a modifier class uh, using the BEM naming convention. So media scroller, and we're going to call it with groups. Uh, just because there will be a, an important change that we make here. And so we have my media scroller. And then here, let's come and create a dot media group first. Just so we can really highlight what's happening. And actually, we're going to do both media um, scroller with groups. And just for demo purposes now too, actually, let's just take all of the stuff ahead and, and comment it out. Uh, just so we can really focus. We don't have to like scroll down to get to this stuff. And my media scroller with groups, let's give this a border that is, you got to spell border, right? Border of two pixels, solid, uh, hot pink. And then let's come on this one and give this a border of two pixels, solid lime green. They show up nice and bright on this darker background color. And I like doing things like this, setting either borders or backgrounds or outlines on things just to highlight where they are. It makes it easier to visualize what's happening sometimes. And so right now we have our media scroller, which has the grid auto columns of 21%. So each one of these is 21% and it leaves this little empty group there. So I don't want this to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is on this one with groups is we're going to override that grid auto columns. And I want my auto columns to actually be 100% now. And it sort of breaks things. But this is really important because I want my group to fill up the entire visible viewport type of thing. And all those other groups are going to be, and they are now, if we side scroll, we'll see they're actually overflowing out the side. But the issue now is how things are presented within this group. And so on my media group here, uh, so we need a display of grid on here and then a grid auto flow of column. And there we go. We can add a gap on here. Gap can be my var, uh, var spacer again. And there we go. So now I have this one element that's coming here. And then my next one is right there. And then my next one is right here. So we're setting up a grid here to get them all the way across. Uh, so we're saying my group itself, which is the green box, is setting up the grid to have all the elements going across. And then the with groups has the grid auto columns of 100%. So this is really what's controlling the size of that green box and making sure that green box is always 100% of the parent. And so we have that, so we can turn off our hot pink, we can turn off our lime green. And of course we want this to actually be snapping. So let's come down and we, we have our snaps in line. So let's make sure we have that. So media, doo -doo -doo, media scroller with groups and we'll add snaps in line right there. 
so now it, it has everything it needs. And if I side scroll, it's going to right away jump over to the next one. So as soon as we go a little bit, it swings over and it gets to that starting point of the next one. And just like that, we get this nice little media scroller. Uh, if I'm using the arrows, I click, it just jumps over to the next one. Uh, or again, if you're on mobile and you give it a nice swipe, it's just going to go and land on the next one right away. And so that can be a nice way to set things up. And I did do something on this one that I said that we shouldn't really do, um, which is line things up to not, you know, edge to edge. So it's not in this case, it isn't as obvious that we can scroll. Um, but um, I think for this type of grouped one, it works a little bit better. But of course, if you want to change this, this, you know, this could be an 80% instead of 100%. Uh, let's turn off my and yeah, now you can see there's, you know, we see that there's the next group there. But as soon as I go, it, it lines up to the start of that one. So if you like that type of behavior better, where it still shows that there's more content, there's, you know, we can, let's leave it like that. Why not? We just freelancing a little bit on that one. And one thing we can do to improve this a little bit is to customize the scroll bars. And if you'd like to see how to do that, there's a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I want to say a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stewart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.